So I'm Joy Tent, and I'm the founder of African Women in Europe. And um, I'm a woman who wears a lot of hats, but the biggest one is African Women in Europe that was founded 15 years ago. And we have so many projects, and the projects we have, um, they're coming all the way from um, the chair lady of the Awe Diaspora Circle, the famous one that we were fighting for over three years, launched in April. So we're very proud of that. And then we also have Africa Women in Trade, where we support women entrepreneurs in Kenya. As we speak right now, I even have coffee. I'll be showing you shortly. And to really give you an idea what we do, we have so many stuff. We, we write books. And I've brought some books and I have a very good Christmas offer for you guys. Mm -hmm. So keep stay tuned as we talk Please more. Do. Yeah. We have so much to unleash. So I just gave a quarter okay. of what we do. Yeah. The rest we get in the stock. Wow, wow. You've had three major things that she's doing and she's not stopping there because I know the power behind her, no one can stop you. <laughs> she can push a whole train on her own. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not me. I, I stand as one. I present 10,000 women. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do a lot and I'm so amazed at the energy that you have. I have attended some of the get togethers or the yearly annual meetings for Awe and I'm always marveling at how connected you are. It's amazing. But before we go into the connecting part and the networking part, can you tell us a bit about Awe? We start at the mother organization. I mean, why did you decide to do this? What is the meaning of Awe? Who can be part of Awe? What is going on in our way? So just tell us, just free, you're the founder, so you know what's going on. Yeah, that's a very good question. Awe. In fact, even I gave myself the second name because I think I'm called Joy Awe, yeah, right? Many people know you I am Awe. not from Nigeria. <laughs> I am from Kenya. <laughs> That's very clear. I know there is a community. It seems to be a very good community by chance. The Awe, mm -hmm. uh, Awe <laughs> families in oh, Nigeria. Okay. All <laughs> I right. did a bit of research, uh -huh. but um, yes, but I present Africa. So Awe is Africa women in Europe. The whole idea was actually. I didn't. I, if you ask me, then if I would be here doing what I'm doing today, probably I would have said no when I was flying or coming to Germany through marriage mm -hmm. and um, but it's because of coming to Germany I noticed that there was a connection of uh, I am this woman with a lot of I want to, to achieve so much and I am never limited by anything but when I came here I noticed there was this limitation of mm -hmm. geography you're here mm -hmm. the language I am not seeing people who look like me and if they're there I am thinking really beyond they, everybody else is thinking and I don't think a language should limit me mm -hmm. so my need was to go looking out there who is how, what are people doing in Germany so that was the niche of wanting to know what people are doing mm -hmm. and I just had got my son uh, my firstborn son who is now 18 no wow. 19 oh my goodness wow. <laughs> he's just ever going <laughs> October he turned 19 <laughs> I have two boys anyway mm -hmm. so 19 and, and 15 and they're all much bigger than me right so you've seen them on Facebook but the whole idea when I when you started when you have children and you start integrating the community then that's the time you start feeling oh e, something is not right here mm -hmm. why is this why is that so I also, from that knee, uh, when I had my children going to kindergarten, they had, the small one had a lot of difficulties mm -hmm. in the kindergarten. He had a lot of energy and people could not understand him. And in between there, I had moved to UK for three years, mm -hmm. which was really nice and everything was fine. The children were, they are made to be who they are, mm -hmm. right? So, but when he came here, the first language was English. So you can imagine, if you cannot communicate, you use your physical mm -hmm. body language mm -hmm. so it was not always that well well taken and uh, that one made me now even be more active to find out now what is all this about yeah how do you survive now here with yourself mm -hmm. and the and children, the children? Uh -huh. and how to for me was now more for the, my children than for me yeah so when i was i i looked around my house and i remember one of the lady was telling me she had an organization online those days when you said you had a website yeah. everybody was like wow <laughs> you're a genius <laughs> and you're like Whoa. and yeah. this lady told me okay i said okay let me go to the internet i just just gained i mean to start looking for a computer to figure it out even how to put it in on uh -huh. and off those days uh, -huh. uh but i went Google and said well, how to get to website and all that luckily in the u.s were much advanced so we we started the away mm -hmm. 
uh, website and uh, my need was just to test it to see what is gonna happen mm -hmm. who is gonna come mm -hmm. and and something very important is that you, you use when you start these things you might think you might want to go to your parents or your f family members that's mm -hmm. not how you start right mm -hmm. you start with people who, who are who are looking for things that you're looking at because your friends are not related in this area so if i would get a friend would call mm -hmm. and ask them oh do you know anybody in germany who is and if i could get a number i would call the person how do you survive in germany i was really really active on the phone call mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. i started the website for me oh really? not for Out others of your own needs. yeah i wanted to meet well, others that's how many things and, start. and <laughs> that's how we started with yeah. our way and now with what the first week there were 50 people who joined because i started from uk because that's where i used to know don't forget to yeah. english speaking mm -hmm. and um it's just boomed within one week and i was like oh these are so many people <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what do i do with uh -huh. all these people uh -huh. get organized so the website that i got to a subscription now that you know there's yeah. a subscription you don't create a whole website yourself yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's how I got them the website. And um and in there there were there was opportunity to create groups. It was actually the same time Facebook was coming in. Yeah, yeah. So Facebook was more for the for the students finding each other and I'm I'm sure I didn't want to be found at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so I was staying in the website. So we formed groups. Uh -huh. So we started having country groups. We have German. Don't forget, my target is still Germany. Yeah, no. I was not into because I was it come from UK and I knew knew they were okay, mm -hmm. but I needed to figure out in Germany. So that's that's how I we started. We just the need of wanting to connect with other people who think like me or are doing much better than me and learning from them. From each other. From yeah. each other. But actually, the idea of the networking was in there from the very beginning. Yes. I yes. Could, actually. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, the problem with the internet when you went to do Google that day those days if you if, and i was looking for people if you put african women it's oh, african men looking for african women mm -hmm. and these european men mm -hmm. there was nothing interesting at all no organization was online that was constructive mm -hmm. that you could join so for me that was also to change the image of the african woman uh -huh. okay so actually the motivation was for you but also you wanted to have a coordinated place where people could get to meet the africans yes, yes. the women yes. uh, mainly the women why why did you start only for the women why did you not think okay all africans need each other so i'm gonna start a group <laughs> where the men are in, invited as well i mean we have my fellow uh candida here the vip or ambassador he's always complaining men don't have you know men don't have now why did you start a women's uh, organization first uh, to be honest i found it easier to work with women that time mm -hmm. and knowing what i am right now that time i, I didn't know where i'm heading to but mm -hmm. i thought we because when we had actually we in the beginning there were men coming mm -hmm. and i because i was not sure where do i go with this direction mm -hmm. but what happened the men when they came they were disturbing the women mm -hmm. I said, oh, can we have dates? And I was getting this message. This, there's a man in the group and he's terrorizing <laughs> us and doing this. And I had to go in the website and remove them. Yeah. And, and, and I said, no. Then I, I had to keep it only women. Ah, okay. That was why. And because yeah. the women were already married, they, they already knew what they wanted. They were looking to connect, to, connect yeah. to do businesses and move forward. And I had a lot of that issue. Yeah. So I had to stop right from the beginning because they are the ones who messed it it's up okay. in the beginning. Men, you've heard but not everybody, no every but we do have men. <laughs> we later had we do have men now. Yes. Because now they come Those in who are as a um, yes. So what you guys are doing, eh? What's up? Because I have to say where uh, where there's a strong woman, there's a strong man, not the other way around. Uh -huh. <laughs> So the men come in and mm -hmm. they support a lot mm -hmm. and i and i also don't block men as i say they come in in different ways we have you see our events yeah. we have them they're all yeah. they want to help here yeah. they want to help that yeah. they they are part of our way and being a mother of two boys i cannot be very much although i am very feminist mm -hmm. that's true but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i do have that that opportunity that i need to integrate the men as well yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah i mean i have seen also that men are somehow very active also in your organization or whatever you've been doing until now and i know that it's a need of course a man a man is always needed even if sometimes we want to lead our on our own but 
they will be there for some of the issues that we may need. Now, you decided our way is going to be for the women. You started it and uh, you said you started and right away you had so many people. Yeah. How, how, how many people do you have right now in our uh, On the whole, because we came out, don't forget our way of the website. Then there, there was this Facebook that was coming. Mm -hmm. I told you you were starting and it was taking over all the con communications. Mm -hmm. So we also had to move to the to the to the social to social platforms like yeah. Facebook mm -hmm. and and um, and Instagram and all that. So when you on our own website we have two thousand who have registered and wow. we also have uh, when you count everywhere it's like six thousand and we have groups wow. groups in uh, in in Facebook and uh, for for UK we have a Facebook group Awe African Women in Europe. Uh, we have Germany, our Africa, women, Europe, UK. You will see all of them on the Facebook, and they have almost most of them are over a thousand mm. and two thousand, and bringing the communication. And we have people also money or um, admis ad uh, doing administration there. But mm. our main focus is our website. Mm -hmm. Our website to be there is free, of course, and um, that also was a place where we keep most of our information and communication okay so we have two websites the african women in europe mm -hmm. eu mm -hmm. and we have an invent website which is our african women in europe dot you dot which is under wordpress mm -hmm. so there you can see what we do mm -hmm. but on the main website you need to register to see more okay okay so there is uh, also a um, possibility to register because that one would be nice for the people to know how do i get involved i mean with such a, people will just see your energy and they're like i want to be part of it and uh, they would like to know how to get involved how can someone get involved yeah i mean just register african women in europe .eu, mm -hmm. and if you feel like you want first of all get to know who we are you can follow us on our uh, on uh, on on facebook mm -hmm. right we are very active there, quite a lot with the activities we do, uh, because we have been, as I said, we have a fifth going f officially is 13 years, but uh, we had already started before we got registered. So, and we are a social business. We are not an NGO. That's something I always it want to clear very clear. Yeah. Because people need to understand the difference. Yeah. Because the NGOs, they are like, for them in Germany, call them a fine mm -hmm. or non-profit organization. We are social business. That means we are registered in Germany as a small business. Okay. And uh, that means we are doing all any, like any other business, making profits and having to account our paperwork with the finances, doing taxes everything. And everything. Yeah. So it's a small businesses, but it's a social business. Okay. So where we can sell these books, like I told you, and mm -hmm. we can, uh, we can do the registration for membership and we have so many projects mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially the main is the hosting the events, mm -hmm. the one that you probably you have been in some of yes, our events, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I was very happy to be part of. Uh, I think I've been to two, two or three of them, and uh, actually was very interested. And when I went there to hear what the women have been doing and what uh, what women you meet and connect with is amazing. I mean, I was really uh, very very surprised how much energy is in these women who are there all of them every story was very exciting every story was very interesting and everyone had a story to tell that led them to our way and also how they survive so the books especially can you tell us what was i mean because you have the our book like you said yeah um we have the our book volume one we have the our book the second one as well huh? yes where well, you're there yes you're the one of ours one, yeah. one is very <laughs> colorful and the other one is very yeah uh they're all very very good stories yeah, yeah. so so the story behind the our book is very simple we were we were heading to 10th anniversary mm -hmm. and we decided we need to leave a legacy we need to do something 10th anniversary is a big number when you think of yes. we had we had started without knowing where we want and mm -hmm. objectives and aims were ever growing we, mm -hmm. we did not only want to network mm -hmm. we were now mentoring we were also uh doing quite a lot of activities with the with the conferences there was a lot of workshops mm -hmm. real workshop a lot of uh, 
organization meeting up. Mm -hmm. So these, um, so on the 10th anniversary, we decided to write, to leave a legacy on our, leave our true stories. Yes. Because what you know, uh, what everybody do out there is like when you go to uh, back home, we just like to show off a lot, which yeah. is not true. Yeah. We really had to go ahead before we reach where we are right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And um, people need to understand it's not that easy when you come to Europe. And what we show off there is not the reality. So we put it down the paper so that you don't only hear people telling you maybe somewhere and because it's only told you one time you don't take it serious yeah. so when you come here don't be expecting there's money falling from heaven mm -hmm. you have to really go down to scratch and listen to the people what they do and the other thing is that since we have gone through all this issue yeah. why should you come and go back again to where we should be heading forward you know yeah. like now you know when you come you'll get this and this and this so prepare yourself when you arrive this will happen and this is the way you should act because mm -hmm. if you act this other way it will yeah. not work out yes, for you yes. because according to what you read or seen real true stories so these are uh we were we all came and wrote our stories so mm -hmm. the first story is mine if mm -hmm. you want to read about me exactly what i'm telling you and how i started our way yeah. because that is actually my story that's how i came here and got to where i am through my own story mm -hmm. and you see our coffee on um uh one boy there you have milka you have people from nigeria cameroon youth as well south africa as well returnees were also in here as well and they all give their stories yeah. exactly what really happened so this is a very beautiful book i would recommend anyone mm -hmm. even not only for you diaspora back at home because you also have this book in kenya yeah at a textbook center you can get it and uh so when we started the journey and everybody was interested and they always wanted to be part of it now we have volume two during covid people had a lot of time to write yeah. I ca you cannot believe agnes had time to write for us a book she's a very busy woman don't uh, don't ask me how she managed <laughs> Our book is actually number one. I didn't. I, what I do, I bring them together. We have our editor, Mr. Shamla, uh, Puri for from from UK, the editor. So he takes the books and put them the order. So yours was number one, and I said, "Hey, this has to be a very yeah, and it was a very interesting book." And today we actually give out. We have two books to give away. Volume one, volume two. You're gonna buy from it. You can buy them from our website. Uh, but I'll let the the host decide how she's going to do this uh, with you. So. So yeah so that's how the book came to life we are still writing because some people are not ready for this one we are there's they were late so oh, they, they okay. have we have they already wanted to start from th from volume three already we uh -huh. said no we have to start selling this so we are still in the beginning of the new book it's a uh -huh. very colorful book yeah. actually when you look at it a book that when you read you can give somebody else to uh -huh. read uh -huh. so i find it very 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 handy book and also when you get the book when you finish hand over to somebody else to read because yes. these stories are are from us and yeah. it's written in our way of writing our english mm -hmm. because it's in english we wanted to change one <laughs> it's not in, it's not oxford english yeah. <laughs> so, so anyone can read and then also the the the, the, the germans also are very they are one of our biggest buyers yeah because they want uh, to understand that when i'm telling and some of this book you will not finish the book without crying eh? yeah some of the stories the story they are so real and so deep they are yeah. very deep what mm -hmm. people go through yeah. um in in the in in the in the process of migra migration so and it is part of of the country you cannot stop it yes people will always move to other location to other places for greener pasture that will never stop even this will not stop even jesus was like he migrated, migrated also <laughs> <laughs> So it's all about yes, it's That's all about origin. how do you cope with it, with and it. how do the people in the country cope? Even in our yeah. own country, Kenya, yeah. we have already so many in Kenya. Each yeah. country, yeah. it's part of people movement part and people and development. Movement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how we got the book, and now we give the stories, our stories. 